good. <laughs> Coach, you spoke about the importance of defense going into this game. How did you see the Nuggets step up there in the second half? Yeah, I finally showed up in the second half. Obviously, they're a tough team. They have a lot of great individual players. Uh, but I, I think you hold that team in the fourth quarter to 18 points and 36% from the field. And that carries over into overtime. Um, I thought Mason Plumlee was great. Met the challenge of guarding one of the hardest guys to guard in the league in DeMarcus Cousins. And uh, he was great. Trey, obviously, the minutes he gave us. Will Barton kind of showed up. He scores 11 about 13 in overtime. Um, and the most important thing is we win the season series. We're down 18. We look like we've been on a long road trip. We have no legs. But our guys never quit. And we we're really positive with them at halftime, saying, hey, we're going to get this game. We're going to get this game. And I thought one of the keys, Allie, was we're down 18. We call a timeout at the end of the second quarter. And we close the half on a 6-0 run, take it from 18 down to 12. And uh, that was important. That, that gave us a little bit of uh, uh, kind of motivation for that second half, but an unbelievable win. So proud of our guys. Hey, going into that second half, what was your message to the guys as you closed it down from the 18 to 12? Yeah, it was real simple. Uh, you know what, fellas, first game back is always the hardest game. Uh, we're still trying to find our legs. Jamal Murray was, I mean, we've been out of the altitude. And so first quarter, six minutes in, Jamal was looking at me like, I can't breathe. I mean, we had guys on our bench taking their sneakers off in timeouts because they were that tired. But uh, the message was simple at halftime. Stay with us. We're going to be fine. Just continue. Let's get our defense into the game. Uh, let's make sure we're, uh, you know, keeping them off the three-point line. We did a great job of taking care of the ball for the most part. We had 30 assists tonight, so it was very positive, very encouraging. And at some point, I knew that we would catch our second win, and I knew that we would get defense into the game at some point. And uh, you know, to come back from 18 down against that team, coming off of a six-game road trip is a hell of a win for us. So very proud of our guys. And coach, good to see Tory Craig having these Yeah. <laughs> that guy, you guys got to understand what, he, what he's been through the last 24 hours. He gets a call. He's in middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. He takes an Uber. He gets a 4 o'clock wake-up call on a 5.15 flight. He gets here for shoot-around. I start him. He plays well. I put him in at the end of regulation, and he blocks Drew Holiday's shot. Welcome to the NBA. That kid is an NBA player. I believe in him, and I think we're going to see more and more great things from Torrey Craig moving forward. When did you know you were going to start him? Um, I said, you know what, they have this 45-day rule. If he's going to be up here, let's play him. I did not want to bring Tory Craig up and say, okay, just in case of emergency. And uh, I talked with Nicola. I think Nicola was more comfortable coming off the bench tonight, kind of ease him back into it. By the way, he gets a double-double, which is amazing in 22 minutes. And it didn't even seem like he had a double-double, Nicola. But uh, after shoot around, I said, you know what, let's put Tory out there. I mean, Tory's been guarding the G League best players. Let's put him on Drew Holiday. And I thought of all the guys that guarded Drew Holiday, and I thought he did an unbelievable job guarding him. He's, he's got great size, physicality, athleticism, and that last player regulation, I think, speaks to the potential he has a defender, as a defender in the NBA. So really proud of Tori. <laughs> Tori comes up, let's just put him on Drew Holiday. You make it sound like it was such an easy decision. Was it, did it, was it that easy? It For me it was. I mean, you know what, because I believe in him. Yeah. I said it in Boulder. I say it right now, not just because of the game he had, but because I've seen it. You know, I saw it in Summer League. I saw it when we were in Atlanta with our mini camp. I saw it in our gym all through September. Uh, Tori Craig is an NBA player. I've been in the league a long time. And my, my thinking on it was really simple, Chris. Again, 45 days, throw him out there. Let's see if he is what I think he is. And he is. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't unbelievable tonight, but he made enough key plays in this game to have a positive impact in the outcome. And that's not easy for a guy that's traveled all night, got here, and showed up. Hey, go ahead, take your holiday. And he embraced it. And I think he'll continue to embrace those types of opportunities. So what was the key to the defense on Anthony Davis? He had a big first half, but then that third quarter in particular, you guys really got to slow him way down. What was the key there? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. We've had this a lot this year. First half, the defense really isn't there. And the second half, our defense turns up. And it's not like we change a lot of things. I think what we change is our aggression. We, what changes is our physicality, our hit first mentality. And again, I thought, you know, whether it was Wilson on Anthony Davis, whether it was Trey Lyles on Anthony Davis, and Mason's defense on DeMarcus Cousins. I mean, when you when you guard DeMarcus, you have to get into your mind, it is going to be a just a hand-to-hand -hand combat. And you're either going to shy away from that or you're going to embrace it. And I thought all of our guys embraced that in the second half. Our fourth quarter defense tonight was amazing. I mean, again, 18 points, 36% from the field. And uh, we force overtime, and uh, we, pull, we pull out of a, a great win. So 
Uh, so proud of our guys. As we all know, they're tired. But to win the season series against this team moving forward is going to be really important. And we continue to win on the home court, which I think is really important as well. That fourth quarter defense really seemed to stem from Mason Plumley. What did he do differently to really be able to stymie these guys down low? You know, I, I think it was doing his work early. You know, when you guard a guy like DeMarcus, you can't wait to defend him. You know, DeMarcus got going from the three-point line. I mean, he's such a freaky, freakish, talented guy. But I think it was just meet, meeting him early, doing his work early, meeting his physicality. And I give the referees credit because they allowed those guys to play. You know, it, there, were, there was a lot of physicality going on, uh, but they allowed them to play. And we had active hands, and we gave Mace help when we needed to. And uh, we pulled out an unbelievable win. Will's closed a lot of games for you guys over the course of the season already. What's he like in the overtime period in huddles? Is, does he want the ball in those situations? Uh, Will, Will always wants the ball. Man. <laughs> you know, Will could be 0 for 10. Coach, give me the ball. Give me the ball. And uh, that's why, like, I, I was trying to get the ball in his hands to run a play, and they trapped him along the sideline, and they turned the ball over. And then late, you know, he could have made one more pass, and they, and they foul him, and he misses the first free throw. I mean, so it's great to, to want to be in that moment. He's never scared of the moment. He has supreme confidence. Uh, but obviously, we just got to make sure we're not turning the ball over in those situations. But, you know, Will Barton's a gamer. In the first half, you could tell his back was bothering him. You could tell he wasn't him. It was not Will Barton. As that second half uh, kind of, you know, went on, he, he loosened up. He got his swag back. And then in overtime, he brought it home at 11 to 13 points, which is, uh, which is amazing. Thank you, Sandra. Really. Uh, Moutier, obviously, uh, he's going home with a, uh, an ice machine, roll it, uh, obviously keep it iced, elevated, and uh, we'll see how he feels tomorrow. But I don't think there's anything really serious or sinister. Uh, I think it's just a, a bad ankle sprain. Hopefully we'll have him back for practice on Sunday. Uh, like you said, a really physical game. Do you, do you have any, or does it give you any extra pride to win one of those kind of knockdown, drag out games as a coach? Yeah, I mean, you know, these are the kind of games you have to win. You know, we want to be a playoff team. They want to be a playoff team. But there was a lot at stake tonight. Season series against a team that's going to be, you know, nip and tuck the whole way for until mid middle of April. So the fact that, you know, uh, last year, and we've seen it time and time again, early in the year, we had Paul and Nicola as our closers. Well, right now, we relied on our defense. We relied on Will Barton, Gary Harris, Jamal Murray, Mason, and Trey Lyles. So that's what I love about our team. We're a very resilient group. Guys are out, guys are hurt, guys aren't playing. Other guys step up. They embrace that opportunity. So, yes, to, to, to win a very physical game down the stretch and win it with our defense is very, very, uh, you know, pleasing as a coach because in the long run, if you want to be a playoff team, these are the types of games that you have to win. You have to embrace those physical games, and you have to win with your defense, and we were able to do that tonight. Did, did you feel like Mason was able to frustrate DeMarcus at all down low with just his physicality? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Cuz gets frustrated a lot of things, <laughs> um, and that, that motivates him, obviously. Um, and again, as I said earlier, I think the referees allowed both of them to play. Both of them had five fouls forever. You know, and, and obviously we thought there were times where Cuz should have fouled out, and they thought, I'm sure, there were times that Mason should have fouled out. But the referees allowed them both to play. And that's all you want as a coach. You want a consistent whistle. So I thought the referees did a great job with that. But um, yeah, Mason was, again, if you do your work early, you give yourself a chance. But a week and a half ago in New Orleans, we, we let DeMarcus do whatever he wanted. We didn't embrace and meet that challenge. Tonight we did. And obviously we were able to pull out a great win. What were the big differences in having right, AD Pinchy. back? I'm sorry? What were the big differences in having AD back for this game as opposed to a week ago when Anthony Davis didn't play? Yeah, I mean, geez, you know, I, uh, the big difference is tonight they have two all-NBA players. I mean, that is uh, really, really hard to guard. They put so much pressure on you. Um, you know, Anthony Davis is a hell of a player. DeMarcus is a hell of a player. And to, uh, you know, to, to guard those guys, obviously, it comes down to, as I mentioned many times, uh, embracing the opportunity and meeting them early and doing your work early. One guy can't guard either one of them one-on-one. -on -one. They're too good. I mean, Anthony Davis and, and DeMarcus Cousins are, two, I think, the most talented front court in the NBA. And obviously, uh, you know, it, it takes not only one guy to guard them, it's a team effort. And I think we had that tonight. Thank you, guys. We're holding Thanks, on. Coach. Trey Lyle.